Week 18 might be bumpy. Unfortunately, we have to return to the hospital once more. This one can be a minor problem, but we do still need to understand it. Hmm, OK. Minor problem. So, just a small problem, but it can be a minor problem. Hmm, that would suggest that it can also be a major problem. Let's go and have a look. Why is it bumpy? First, we had a broken leg. And then it was poison. Oh, OK. What's the picture in the middle? Well, that's this week. This last one happens with a simple bump to the head. Hmm, OK. I am sure we have all bumped our head in the past. Ouch, yeah. That's certainly what you say. There might be initial pain, but... We will look at the possible long-lasting effects. So, usually, you bump your head and you just go, ow, and it's okay. We are very lucky. Our head is really tough, but not that tough. After a bump to the head, you can suffer concussion. Concussion. Good word. Let's talk about grammar. OK. Usually, at this point, we look at this week's grammar. Yep, let's look. Oh. Not this week. Why? This week, there is no grammar. Hooray! Woohoo! Yes, I'm sure that last sentence was very, very popular. No grammar? Hmm. Why? That's right. But we will have some great new vocabulary. Actually, there's quite a lot of really good and useful vocabulary this week. There will be a few words associated with our hospital theme. Actually... I think it's a bit more than a few. I think we've got some great words this week. Really, really great and useful. I hope you can try and remember and use some of them. So, there's the first one. What is concussion? It's a traumatic brain injury caused by a blow to the head. Right, that's quite a difficult sentence, isn't it? Hmm, traumatic. OK, so we know what brain is and injury. But what about traumatic? Traumatic is an adjective that describes something that is disturbing in an upsetting way. So, when we say disturbing, what we mean is that it moves things around. And here, it moves things around in a bad way. So, what does the blow do? In this case, blow means hit. If you have a blow to the head, 
It means you hit your head. Oh, wow. Look at that. We've got some very interesting pictures there. The blow makes the brain move within the skull and can create chemical changes there. Now, around your brain, you've got like a big bag of liquid. Now, that means that your brain can move around a little bit. It can bump against the liquid. Now, the problem is when your brain bumps against the inside of your skull. That's the problem. So the bag of liquid around your brain is really important and it protects your brain really quite well. But not if the blow to the head is a little bit harder. Yeah, changes, chemical changes to your brain. That sounds bad. Usually it's not life threatening. Now, usually, that's very important to remember. This is why you must get treatment for a bump to the head. Diligent observation of the patient is vital. Mm. Now that's a really good sort of hospital doctor kind of sentence there. Diligent observation. Now this means to watch carefully. Diligent means with great care. And observation, well that's watch. So diligent observation. Watch the patient carefully. Because changes can happen. Look out for signs. Uh -huh. What does that mean? A sign that tells you to turn left, turn right, stop. No, no, no. Signs or indicators are things we can see that give us an idea that perhaps a concussion has occurred. Hmm. So... We diligently observe and look for signs. So what are signs of concussion? Some signs are memory loss. Patient appears dazed. Patient moves clumsily. Patient loses consciousness. Wow, okay. Now these are all signs, but it's only some signs. There are many others. If you act differently in any way to how you usually act, that could be a sign that you've bumped your brain and there's a little problem there. Consciousness. That's a long and difficult word, isn't it? Consciousness is the state of being awake and aware of what is around you. So, at the moment, we are all conscious. We're awake. We know what is happening. If you lose consciousness you become unconscious you look as if you're asleep but it has probably happened very quickly so you're not asleep you are not awake you are not aware of what is happening around you 
Are signs or symptoms? Well, a symptom is what the patient can complain of themselves. The patient can say, Ow, I've got a headache. Or, Oh no, I can't really see properly. These are symptoms. A sign is what the doctor can see. So, if you are asked, what is your name, what is your address, and you give a slightly wrong answer, you won't know you've done that, but the doctor will. That's a sign, not a symptom. So what are some symptoms? Well, these can include headache, balance problems, or photosensitivity. What a great word. Photosensitivity is when you are upset by light. This is quite common with concussion. Because your brain, it's getting muddled up. It's been hurt. If you've got light shining into your eyes, ow, no, stop it. So, it's a very clear symptom. Now, right at the start, it says, these can include. So, there are many other symptoms the doctor really is looking for any kind of change. Delayed symptoms. Okay, these are where we get the real problems. If symptoms appear sometimes later, they can be more dangerous. It is easy to think you are okay, but actually the problems are hidden. Sometimes your brain actually gets a bruise and that can develop over time. There might be blood in your brain in the wrong place. It may stop certain things from happening. Maybe the blood is moving around your brain slowly in the wrong places. This is why delayed symptoms can be very dangerous. Very dangerous indeed. And it's more dangerous for kids. Of course it is because children's brains are still developing. They're still quite young and tender and growing. Younger patients are more susceptible and need prolonged observation. Susceptible. Susceptible means that they are more likely to be harmed. So it could mean at more risk. So children need prolonged observation. They must be watched for a longer time. Please be careful. Your brain is really amazing. People are the most amazing and smartest animal in the world because we have this amazing brain. Your brain, of course, is in your head. Take care of your head. Please be careful. Can you go home? It's just a bump on the head. Well, it is important to reiterate that symptoms can appear later. 
reiterate reiterate if we reiterate we say it again with more feeling so the doctor might say please rest okay please you must rest as much as possible the doctor will reiterate that you must rest listen to the doctor they're really amazing have I said that before I think so now can you go home well yes but this means that when you do go home it is best if you are not alone always remember the possibility of these delayed effects if you are alone and your condition deteriorates this can be very dangerous deteriorate deteriorate this means something continues to get worse so you think you've just had a bump on your head but actually maybe you've bruised your brain we really are using some great vocabulary today aren't we yeah lots now I'm not going to tell you all the vocabulary again but please try and have a look at these words maybe write them down see if you can use them some of them might be quite difficult to use just in your daily routine but see if you can find situations where you could use them it'll help you remember them so how long does recovery take every case is different but let's consider a grievous situation can you guess what grievous means he does not look happy does that give you a clue it means really bad grievous actually in this situation means so bad that you could even die that's how bad it could get a grievous situation recovery can take several weeks you need lots of rest with frequent naps now this just allows your brain to slowly recover it's sort of doing nothing with your brain you must also restrict your screen time now these days we all use our computers and mobile devices so much but if you use it too much you will increase your screen time and that is not good you've just got to rest your brain post concussive syndrome post means after so I think we can guess the middle one concussive must be something to do with the concussion so post means after and syndrome is a set of associated symptoms oh dear yes so post concussive syndrome this is when the symptoms of concussion 
can stay with you for a long time. This is when we need to get worried. Recent developments. Well, there has been a lot of recent research into contact sports. These are sports like football and boxing that have frequent impact to the head. Now boxing you can get hit quite hard can't you? But football, well when you head the ball, no, well that doesn't hurt does it? You head the ball, the problem is you head it a lot. It's frequent minor impact. New rules in football do not allow kids under 10 years of age to head the ball. They kick it, they run, they tackle, of course they fall down and get hurt sometimes, but they do not head the ball. Their brains are so young and developing so much, we don't want them to get bumped. It has been shown that many small concussions can lead to dementia later in life. Dementia. Dementia. This is a terrible brain disease that means you can't remember. You have problems speaking and you can't do simple tasks. It's a horrible thing that happens to a few old people and it is a terrible terrible way to grow old. So stay safe, be careful, your head is amazing, we have got the best brains in the world ever. Thankfully, concussion is usually mild, but every bump to the head needs to be taken seriously. Yes, even if it's a little bump, be careful. If you bump your head and then one hour later you've got a headache, tell someone. It might be a bigger problem than you realise. It's better to be safe than sorry. Now, no more visits to the hospital. Great. And it's all changed next time. Something very different. That's good. You stay safe and we will see you soon. Bye.